Today sees the release of what is already a hugely popular set of irons from TaylorMade. This is the new P770. What I'm gonna look at in today's video is perhaps who these are for, what makes it different from previous generations, and I'm also gonna take a close look at why I think a full set of these is not the ideal option from TaylorMade right now. Right, okay, so let's start with what's changed from the previous iteration, and the big deal is the looks. Now, that's not a big deal for everybody, but you can't argue. For me, this is probably the best set of irons that TaylorMade have ever released, visually at least, anyway. And it's quite a big change. There's no high polished chrome. It's very much a brushed satin finish with minimal markings. And like I said, if anyone doesn't like these, then I think you've got something wrong with your eyes. They're just so good. And a full set of these in the bag is going to grab plenty of attention. We then go to the shaping and the profile, and that's also something that's changed significantly. The top line in particular has been thinned down, and that's due to feedback from users out there in the field who wanna see a more slightly more compact iron. And then there is also the shape of the sole, which has been changed significantly for better turf interaction. Leading edge sits a lot tighter to the turf, and that again is based on player feedback. Tungsten is located in a different position in each of the irons, and that's really to make sure you get an optimum performance in terms of launch and spin throughout the set. And obviously that's gonna be different requirements at the short to the long end of the game. Speed air foam remains as the filler in this hollow bodied iron. And the other thing that's really interesting is that it's standardized at a loft at 33 degrees in the seven iron. So it's a fairly traditional loft, and that's gonna become really important when we talk about another set of irons coming from TaylorMade later on in this video. So this morning, I've come down to what is an incredible facility at Chester and North Wales Golf Academy. We're gonna be using TrackMan. Obviously, I'll be collecting data as normal, but it's gonna be with a seven iron and a five iron. And then once we've got that, I'm gonna go out on the golf course and we'll get some real time feedback as to how these things sound and feel because that's another big change and claim that TaylorMade are making that is another leap forward in that department as well. Right, so that dry ball data was uh, produced on a seven iron and a five iron. Um, starting off with a 7-iron, 160 nearest dammit carry, 21.6 launch, uh, off a reasonable slowish club head speed, but still real good ball speed in relationship to that club head speed, peak height of 100 feet, 5146 spin, and a land angle of an incredible 49.1 degrees. I would argue that that's launching just a little bit high for me, and you would have to look at the kind of shaft head combination that I've been hitting with. But what we can certainly see is that this is a, a more traditionally lofted seven iron. It's doing what it should do, which is launch the ball high. Peak height is considerably high. Spin number is really good for me. A lot of people who watch the channel over a period of years will tell you that my spin number with a seven iron doesn't often creep up between five, five and a half thousand revs. But when you combine all those attributes together, that land angle, that spin number from that peak height and that launch, this ball is coming down from the clouds and will stop on greens, there's no doubt about that. And then you go into the five iron, and what's so impressive again is sort of only an 81 mile an hour club head speed with a 120 ball speed. These things are firing off this five iron. Uh, a 186 carry, still launching the ball high at 18.9, peak height in 94, three three spin. That's the one that you're gonna pick fault with arguably, but you've got to understand where I am at in terms of testing indoors off a mat. I always produce an incredibly low number. You've then got that land angle of 43 degrees, combine all them together. And I'm gonna go out on the fairways now at Hill Valley. And what I'm expecting to see is very high launching golf balls. And if I'm getting them on the green, I'm expecting to see them stop very quickly. First point to note, um, out on a golf course, I just hit six iron, 175 to the middle of this green, pretty much bang on my number. In terms of the spin, pitch and stop we're right in the middle of the summer here and uh, pretty firm green so really impressive with a the ball flight you'll see from that six iron it's coming down at a tremendously steep descent angle and clearly that combination of spin descent angle has meant that the ball has stopped within a foot or two of its landing position so super impressed with those attributes at least so far now, I briefly mentioned how good these things look, but in a full bag lineup, oh my God, it's, 
I genuinely believe that's the best set of irons that uh, visually that TaylorMade have ever produced. I've probably said that already. Shaping and profile is really good. Sit nice behind the ball. Again, what they've done, they've thinned that top line out, as I've said, and it does sit nicer for me. Um, and it just depends what you like on the eye. Sound and feel, they say it's made a leap forward again. I wouldn't say it's a leap forward. It's definitely better. And each time a new iteration of P770s or the 790s have come out, they definitely have improved each year. Ultimately, it's still a hollow body iron with a forged face. It is not the same as a fully forged iron, but to a lot of people that makes no difference. Ball flight's been superb, that's the big thing. There's a towering ball flight from pretty much each of these irons, right from the short end into the long end of the bag, which is a massive help as well. I suppose the thing that I've been most impressed with in the P770s is in the longer irons. I've only gone up to five iron that I've brought out on the golf course. And uh, again, what's interesting is just the ball flight, high launching ball, which in longer irons I love, especially I've got the quickest of swing speeds. So to still see me generating enough club head speed to get that type of launch is uh, really encouraging and definitely a strong part of this P770 lineup. But there is one thing with the P770s that I would perhaps change. It's not the P770s themselves, but Taylor made have also released the P7CBs today. And for me, at least, I would seriously consider blending these two sets. And really that's what Taylor made have intended in many ways because the lofts on these things fit seamlessly together. Both seven irons are 33 degrees and you can easily switch these up. And for me, like I said, I might start to look at the eight, nine and pitching wedge in the CB model. They are pure forged. There's a little bit softer feel that I really like down that short end of the bag. And then you've got all that support in the likes of the five iron from the P770s, high launching, forgiving. So it's a great combination of these two sets to put together. And I've got to say, as far as what Taylor made have done so far, in my opinion, for me at least, this is the best set of irons that they've ever produced and the best combo set of irons certainly they've ever produced. So that's me done. You've seen the data, you've seen the performance out here on the course at Hill Valley and it's very hard to pick fault with what is a great set of irons from TaylorMade. Right, that's me done. I'm going to carry on playing some golf here. I might even see if I can sink that birdie putt and I'll see you all soon. And don't forget, if you enjoyed the video, hit the like button, maybe consider subscribing, but certainly give me some feedback down below as to what you've thought of these irons and maybe the overall performance.